Welcome to season three of Real Garage. Today we're going to actually have to detour off our regular projects to take care of some real issues that happen in real life, even on Real Garage. My dilemma this week is my old Jeep TJ with a buttzillion miles on it. The front pinion bearings and U-joint is shot. Well, it's basically destroyed. To get the front drive shaft off, I have to remove the center skid plate, which also serves as a transmission and transfer case mount. Unfortunately, only two of the six bolts came out. The others were stripped inside the frame rail. I basically took a pickle fork and had to beat it in between the frame and the skid plate and then take my impact gun and just strip them the rest of the way out. Once I got the skid plate down, this is what I found. The frame is rusting out in between the skid plate and the bottom of the frame, which I guess is common on this model Jeep because there really isn't any drain holes to allow any trapped water out. So now I'm gonna have to cut out and cap the bad areas of the frame. Since my lift is occupied with the 69 Trans Am project, I'm gonna build me a set of elephant stands to get the Jeep up high enough so that I can work on it. Okay, this is an elephant stand. It's basically what we called our taller wheel stands we make for our race cars. Why do they call it an elephant stand? Well, as you can see, it kind of looks like a circus elephant stand. And if it can hold an elephant, it surely can hold TJ. These are 10 inches tall. The base is 19 inches square and the top is 15 inches square. You can get five 19 by 48 inch wide pieces out of a four by eight sheet of eighth inch 5052 aluminum, which is good enough for four stands. I'm also gonna use four pieces of 36 inch long one by one by eighth inch 6061 aluminum square tubing. Okay, this is my layout. I plan on making my sheet cuts wide enough to get two sides and a top, and then bending those in my brake, then cutting two separate sides and welding those on. You could cut all the pieces separately and then weld them all together. It really ends up only being two more top side welds. Warning. Read and follow all labels and your owner's manuals. Cut four of your 19 by 48 inch pieces to 35 inches. Save the drop off for one of your sides. Cut the remaining 19 inch sheet into four pieces. If you are bending two of your sides, cut them to 10 and 1 16th by 19 inches to compensate for the bend radius. Or stick with 10 inches by 19 inches if welding all sides separately. Also, cut your drop-off pieces from the previous step to the same dimensions. On all your 35 inch pieces, mark 10 inches in from each end. and then mark two inches in from each side of the 10 inch line. This should give you 15 inches between them. Connect the marks on the 15 inch line to the outside edge of the 19 inch side. 
These are your cut lines and makes up two sides and the top. I'm using a bandsaw to cut these out, but a plasma cutter, jigsaw, or even a reciprocating saw works well too. Now take all your 19 by 10 inch side pieces and mark two inches in from the top 19 inch side and draw a line all the way down to the outside edge of the bottom 19 inch side. You're gonna cut that off and make sure that all your sides look like this. I'm plasma cutting some holes in the sides. It lightens them up a tad, but really it makes it easier to carry and move them around. I'm punching three holes. I'm punching a three and a quarter inch hole and two two a quarter inch holes. And I'm just centering them on the plate. Normally, it would take me all day to punch 48 holes with a hole saw but it only takes a few minutes to make a quarter inch plywood template. Here's a real scoop tip on plasma cutting aluminum. So here's my real scoop on plasma cutting aluminum. Well, actually it's more like a real garage full disclosure. When plasma cutting aluminum, it's basically like plasma cutting steel except the max thicknesses are less because aluminum is such a good thermal conductor. You're gonna have to turn the amperages up on your plasma cutter just to cut the same thickness as you would on steel. Also, the cut area on aluminum isn't nearly as smooth as it is on steel. Now the top of the cut is smooth, but when you get to the bottom, the dross and the cut zone are much rougher and need to be cleaned up. I'll typically use a small flap wheel, grinder, or even a belt sander to smooth and blend the cut area. I also like working with templates. It helps make much smoother cuts than just freehand because plasma is like a little laser. Any slight movement in your hand is gonna be cut into your piece. I'm cleaning up all my holes and rounding the top corners of my side plates. Okay, it's time to bend these. I'm looking for about 78 degrees. This is the type fitment I'm looking for on the weld joints. I'm not fully overlapping the side pieces. To help with tacking, I'm using a couple strips of duct tape to hold the seams together. Remove it quickly and use acetone to clean any tape residue. I'm using 332 5356 filler metal starting at the top seam and then the sides. For these welds, I have my Multimatic 220 ACDC set at 90 Hz and 72% on the balance. Remember to prep and then clean all your weld joints with acetone before welding.
Also, put about a two inch weld on the bottom inside corners. Now cut and fit two pieces of the one by one square tube to fit underneath the top. If you have a miter bandsaw, set it for about 12 degrees. Mine were 15 and 5 16 inch long. If you bent your sides like I did, you'll also have to round the bottom ends to fit inside the corner bend. I'm welding these to my two bent sides, centering them six inches from each side and clamping them tight against the top plate. You could TIG weld these in or use a spool gun. I've done it both ways. When using a spool gun, I used 035, 4943 aluminum wire and the Multimatic 220 ACDC is auto set to 1 8 inch. You should have another piece of drop off about 8 inches wide by 19 inches long. That's enough to cut 8 pieces 2 and a quarter inches by 8 inches. Okay, these are going to be welded on the outside but in line with the bottom support tubes. They basically serve as a tire stop in case the vehicle rolls on the stands. They're going to be welded about halfway up, so that's going to be about an inch to inch and an eighth. I would put a two or three inch weld on the inside and then weld the outside corners. Last but not least, I know you have a few of these drop-off pieces left from your 4x8 sheet. These are about 3 inches wide. Cut 16 2-inch pieces off of them and then bend them at a 90 degree angle. These are going to be your bottom corner doublers. After you weld them on, check your corner welds and make sure that they're flush with the sides. Grind or file them if needed. There we go, strong like elephant. And a lot easier to work on. Like all stands, only use these on a flat level surface. Now TJ here weighs a little over 3,700 pounds. Most of the vehicles I work on are about 4,000 pounds or less. And these stands are plenty good for that. If your vehicle is heavier, you may need to bump up your material thickness. So do your own testing and make sure you're confident in your welding ability or seek out a certified welder. Next time on Real Garage, we cut out and replace TJ's rusty frame rails.